Hello and welcome to Zero Code. When we talk about microservices and scalable architectures, we do say that whenever the load on an application increases, we can increase the instances of that application. And when it decreases, we will decrease the number of instances. You must have also heard about auto scaling where this is taken care of automatically depending on the load. However, when you go into a little bit of details into this of how it happens you will uncover there are a lot of implementation details and there are a lot of design details which are hidden behind scaling one such detail is service discovery so let's talk about what is service discovery and how it is used in microservices architectures if we talk about a traditional client and server architecture a client sends a request to a server and server returns the response if client is only one machine and the server is also only one machine most probably the instances or the physical machines where these applications are deployed the ips of those machines would be fixed so the client would always know using a host name which can be like www.xyz.abc it would know that what is the address of that server which would be mapped to this ip and the client would know where to send that request this is fine when you just have a monolith or you have very small applications which are just deployed on one instance what happens when you have multiple instances of your applications in this case i'm talking about multiple instances of an application on the server side so your client would send a request to the server side but since there are multiple instances of this application on the back end most probably there would be a load balancer or an api gateway in order to handle your request that particular part of this deployment would handle where does your request go to it could go to any of these three instances it would depend on how the load balancing has been done up until this point it is fine because your client can send request to one of the load balancers or the api gateway and its particular ip and then the load balancer takes care of where to route that particular request however the problem occurs when even though the load balancer is aware that there are three instances now in the case when the auto scaling or the manual scaling has to happen where these instances can be added or decreased these ips are not going to be permanent because of the load is increasing a new application instance is spin up and it's added into this mix now the load balancer has to know that you know that new ip has come into the picture and i have to route the request to different instances and also when the deployment happens these ips are going to get lost so every time any kind of scaling happens or a new application instance is up and running the ips will change now how would load balancer or any other module which is sitting in front of it would know that where i have to route this request for a particular service in order to solve this problem there is a concept or a pattern which comes into the picture and it's called service registry now let's see what is service registry service registry would store the mapping between a service and its corresponding instance let's say that the value for these numbers right now is like 1 2 and 3 whenever a request comes to load balancer it can ask service registry what are the different ips or it can also take this data and also cache it somewhere and it would know where it has to route the request now let's say in case the load has increased and two more instances get added what would happen when two more new instances get added they will update or register themselves to service registry and service registry is going to have two more entries now when a request comes from client once again it would the load balancer or any other component which is here the api gateway or load balancer is going to ask service registry about where it has to route the request now instead of three instances it will get four instances where that request can be routed so this is how service registry tells you the truth about how many instances are there and what are their corresponding ips in case a new deployment happens and all these instances are replaced all these mappings or the ips will get changed to some new values but again when these instances come up they will register themselves to the service registry the load balancer can get that information from service registry and then easily route the request of client side this whole process is called as server side discovery because on the server side the discovery is happening the server side is responsible to figure out from service registry where are my instances or what are the mapping or host names for those uh, instances as you must have guessed by now that 
just like server side discovery there is also client side discovery let's see how that works client side discovery is more or less similar to server side discovery except now the responsibility of talking to service registry and getting the respective ips or host names depends on the client the client before sending the request to load balancer would try and check to see where are these services situated or what are the ibs of these services where i have to route the request to in this case service registry might store the ip of load balancer itself or maybe the load balancer wouldn't be there at all the client service itself would take that there are multiple instances of this particular service and some kind of routing is built on the client side the client side can also cache the data from service registry in order to be efficient so that it doesn't have to make an extra call every time a call has to be routed on the server side so this is how the service discovery works on the client side and it's called client side service discovery in majority of the cases this responsibility is offloaded to server side rather than client side and client is kept free from this kind of responsibility but in some use cases it is quite possible that client has to do this part if we talk about service registry and how services register themselves on to the service registry there are actually two parts to it either services can be registering themselves to the service registry as a part of their spin up so as soon as a service instance comes up it will have the responsibility to make a call to service registry and get itself entered into the registry also there can be some third party tools which the instances can call in order to get registered to the service registry i have added examples of both these types in the description the only thing to keep in mind here is that service registry can be a single point of failure because if you look at service registry either on server side or on client side if the server side or the client side are dependent to find out where they have to route the request on service registry and if service registry goes down in that case there will be a failure because it it can become a single point of failure one idea to handle that is that you also cache the values that you get from service registry so at least you can have some kind of availability and there is not a 100% failure on the other hand you should also keep in mind if you are building a service registry it is a component that should be highly available it cannot afford to fail and that's why it has to be kept in mind that this should be highly highly available so that was all about service registry client side discovery and server side discovery we have covered the fundamental topics and concepts i have also linked some resources in the description where you can go and do a deep dive i have also added some github links where you can actually try out these components if you have any doubts or questions please feel free to add them in comments and i will see you in the next video till then take care thank you